Hi, I'm Claire and welcome to Jean Wise, news from the world of SFF. I am recording on April the 29th and today we have a whole three weeks worth of news to talk about because that was EasterCon. We're going to start by looking at awards news, then we'll move on to books, fandom news, then film and TV news, and finally IRL news. For every item that I'm talking about, I'm going to link some extra information and more in-depth articles in the description box below so you can always check there for further reading. First up in awards news, this year's BSFA award winners were just announced at Eterbium, the 70th EasterCon, where I was this weekend. Gareth L. Powell, won Best Novel for Embers of War, Ian MacDonald won Best Short of Fiction for Time Was, Best Nonfiction went to Aliette de Baudard for her essay on motherhood and erasure, while Best Artwork went to Lichane for the magnificent dragon illustrations she did for In the Vanisher's Palace. The Kitschies also recently announced their 2018 winners. They award the year's most progressive, intelligent and entertaining fiction that contains elements of the speculative or fantastic, and the award themselves are a adorable cuddly tentacles. Cersei by Madeline Miller won the Red Tentacle for Best Novel, while Ahmed Sadawi's Frankenstein in Baghdad won the Golden Tentacle for Best Debut Novel, and Suzanne Dean's cover design for Killing Commendator won the Inky Tentacle for Best Cover Art. This year I actually got to attend the award ceremony for the Kitschies, which was super exciting. I've got some footage of that, so I'll be putting together a vlog of the evening shortly when I have time. Look for that on the channel soon. Next up, the Best Translated Book Awards have announced their 2019 long list for both fiction and poetry. There are a lot of books that look really amazing and that I've never heard of on that fiction list, so that could be a really good resource for anyone interested in reading more in translation. And finally, we've got the long list for the Eisner Comic Industry Awards 2019. This is chosen by a panel of judges and it covers pretty much every type of graphic story and every aspect of making comics. There are over 30 categories and loads of titles that I don't recognize alongside series that I love, creators whose work I admire, so I definitely want to check out more of this long list. First up in books, we've got an exciting announcement from Tor Books. They are launching a new horror imprint called Nightfire, which should start publishing in early 2021. Their website says Nightfire will publish fiction that unsettles and delights, exploring the full range of horror, dark fantasy and the supernatural. And the bit that I found really intriguing is that they'll be publishing a wide range of story formats, novels, novellas, short story collections, and in addition to the usual print, audio and ebooks, They'll also be releasing podcasts, graphic novels, and other media. Next up, we've got some staff changes that have just been announced at the multiple award-winning Uncanny magazine. Managing and non-fiction editor Michi Troto will be stepping down at the end of 2019. The managing editor role will be filled by Uncanny's current assistant editor, Chimadum Okbu, and the non-fiction editor role will go to Elsa Unison Henry, who was a guest editor-in-chief and non-fiction editor on the Uncanny anthology, Disabled People, destroy science fiction. Congratulations to them both, as well as Angel Cruz, who will take over as Uncanny's assistant editor. In sadder news, Apex publisher and editor-in-chief Jason Sizemore has announced that the magazine branch of Apex will be put on indefinite hiatus after 10 years to give him more time to focus on the book publishing branch of Apex, as well as his own health and personal life. As a creative person who tries to do all of the things and often feels very, very overwhelmed myself, I feel deeply for Sizemore. I don't know him, but I'm glad he's making a healthy, if incredibly difficult, decision. Apex Magazine's last planned issue will be number 120, a special issue focusing on Afrofuturist fiction, which will be guest edited by Maurice Broadus. It sounds just amazing, and as Sizemore puts it, it's a fitting send off for the magazine. Next up, we have a few exciting new book announcements, starting with multiple Hugo Award winner N.K. Jemison who has just revealed she is writing a Green Lantern comic for DC's Young Animal line. The book is called Far Sector and it's about one lantern on her own apart from the core, a frontier sheriff except in space, <laughs> and it's apparently set around or on a Dyson sphere which sounds super cool. It's got gorgeous art by Jamal Campbell and uh, I guess I'm gonna be into DC now. <laughs> 
Cameron Hurley has announced a new book called Losing Gravity, a sci-fi thriller pitched as Killing Eve meets Die Hard in space. It will be published by Saga Press and it's due out in 2021. We've also got a declaration of the rights of magicians by A.G. Parry. This one caught my eye because it was pitched as a retelling of the French Revolution, the abolition movement in England and the Haitian Revolution but with magic! It is due out in summer 2020 from Red Hook. And finally, Tor.com Publishing has announced a slew of new novella acquisitions. I will leave links to all of the relevant articles in the description box below, but there were two that especially caught my eye. Lena Rather's debut science fiction novella, Sisters of the Vast Black, is about nuns traveling the galaxy as missionaries on a living, breathing ship called Our Lady of Impossible Constellations. And The Order of the Pure Moon Reflected in Water is a wuxia-inspired fantasy novella from the and show about a displaced nun who joins a group of bandits whether they want it or not. I guess Red Sister has made an impression on me because apparently I am massively into sci-fi and fancy nuns right now. <laughs> Next up is Fandom News, and we are starting with Dublin 2019 and Irish Worldcon, who have announced the co-presenters for this year's Hugo Awards ceremony. They are Michael Scott, one of Ireland's most successful and prolific authors, with over a hundred titles to his credit, spanning a variety of genres including science fiction, fantasy, and folklore. And Afua Richardson, an American illustrator best known for her work on the Eisner Award-winning series Black Panther World of Wakanda as well as for her covers for DC, Marvel, Vertigo and Top Cow comics. Moving on to Worldcons of the Future, the UK in 2024 Worldcon Bit team have announced their chosen city, which will be Glasgow. For context, every Worldcon is organized by a different team in a different city, and the Worldcon membership votes on where the convention should go next. This means the Bid team will be pitching their plans for a Glasgow Worldcon over the next few years and asking attendees and members for their support ahead of the vote, which should be in 2022. It may seem weird to be planning so far in advance but running a Worldcon is a massive endeavor, so it makes sense to take loads and loads of planning time. First up in film and TV news, Endgame happened, and I have many, many feelings. That's it. That's the news. I'm not going to discuss anything spoilery in this video, obviously, but who feelings? I have all the feelings. Disney's upcoming streaming service, Disney Plus, is developing a limited series revolving around Hawkeye. The new show will star Jeremy Renner, but let's face it, what we're all super excited about is rumors that the series will focus on Clint Barton passing the torch to Kate Bishop. Disney and Marvel have both declined to comment, but I will keep my fingers crossed for Kate. Next up, we have some exciting casting news for season two of DC Universe's Titans, which will give us Ian Glenn as Bruce Wayne. I don't know if this is mostly just exciting news to me because I'm very weak to Ian Glenn and he will probably be wearing a lot of nice tuxedos in this instead of like dirty armors and horrendously disgusting grayscale. But there you go, another reason for me to get into DC, I guess. In Star Trek news, the upcoming Picard show from CBS All Access has got new cast members. Alison Pill, Harry Treadaway, and Issa Bryanes are all on board as series regulars, and that is pretty much all that we know about that. They haven't given away any character details yet. And finally, have you all seen the trailer from Men in Black International? This is not remotely news, but Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth both look really badass and pretty hot in it, and I kind of can't wait. Moving on to IRL news, I wanted to give a quick update on the possible Airbnb issues that might happen in Dublin this summer. I discussed this in more detail last episode of Genrewise, but since I last talked about it, there has been an official response from Dublin 2019, an Irish Worldcon. There is now a message from the chair of the convention, James Bacon, on the website, so I will leave a link to that in the description box below if you'd like to go and check it out. It's not massively different from the kind of things that I talked about last week. It's all about being careful and double checking and stuff, but that is where the official information is at if you are concerned. And finally, this isn't quite SFF news, but it is book related. We have some movement in the copy paste Chris case. If you were not aware of hashtag copy paste Chris, it is something that 
blew up on Twitter a while ago when a number of romance authors realised that their books had been massively, massively plagiarised by a writer in Brazil called Cristiane Cerullo. And it turns out she had plagiarised from some really, really big name, including Courtney Milan. But as it turns out, the even bigger mistake was plagiarising from Nora Roberts, who really, really does not like plagiarism and is rightfully extremely, extremely pissed off and is now suing Christian Sarouya. So if you would like a little bit of publishing drama schadenfreude, I will leave a link to the article about that in the description box below. It makes for delightful reading, in my opinion. So that's it. This was Genrewise. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you a DC fan or are you, like me, considering maybe going there because N.K. Jemisin and Ian Glenn? How exciting are these many, many book announcements? And how do you feel about Glasgow in 2024? I'm pretty chuffed to see another Worldcon in these here British Isles. <laughs> Those are important questions and I want to know your answers. If you like the show, please share it around. I work really hard on it and I'd love for as many people as possible to see it. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll join me again in a couple of weeks for more science fiction, fantasy and fandom news. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check out a previous video on screen right now. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button that's on my face for a new video from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon.